I mean, even if this crashes and burns, I totally fail. I'm ostracized from the behavioral community. I've lost all of my behavioral colleagues. I still have the things that really matter to me, my loved ones, my family. And you know what? I'd be able to say that I gave it a shot and I'll be able to make some really dope home videos. <laughs> So what's, uh, what's in store for today? All right, I have one question for you. And we're just gonna see where this goes. All right, who is Ryan O'Donnell? So, being yourself's hard to do. There's this like on-camera persona that starts to shape up and you have to be careful to keep it real and authentic. You know, I had a, it's a good question. I had a, a friend, a colleague that I haven't seen in for the better part of about three years. She said, I don't really tune in. It's not the Ryan that I knew. Um, and I think that just goes to show to highlight that this is a, a double-edged sword. You gotta be careful. Um, but I do honestly feel like it is uh, because of my different interactions and my past that I've now found where I really want to fit in into this larger vision of saving the world with behavioral science. I'm finding my flow, the hard work's actually coming together, and I've really honestly never been myself as much as I feel like I am now. You know, we could talk about fighting for the things that you deserve and, and being entitled to certain things, especially in today's culture, but I don't like that message and that content. It's it's bullshit at best. It's it's not real, it's not tangible. You can't you can't use it as someone's trying to figure out and find your way. And I really don't think most people realize just the power, the sheer power of behavioral science and self-management. You know those funky blue charts in our field that most people just don't pay attention to or have some sort of beef with? Well, they've fueled every personal, professional, and client decision that I've made ever since I found them. You can go back, I have binders and key measures going back to 2010 when I first started to stumble into this field and really found it interesting documenting me sorting these sort of things out with my own behavior. And the goal is to always be honest, authentic, and real. And I, you don't want to lose that. If you do, you're just some character in a story. Putting things on camera is, is helping me maintain my true identity, I think. And I really hope I never lose that or else, I don't know, there's like, there's no point in, in really doing it anymore, right? I mean, I spent of my own money or borrowed from the government a total of $120,000 to be able to pursue this, this field and to establish the networks that I'm in. And I realized a few years ago like that, that that image of behavior analysis isn't me. But, and not to knock those things specifically, but it's, it's that we kind of force fit and try to force each other into this, this model that we don't have to conform to. <laughs> And I've been there, dressed to the nine, all suited up, presenting my poster. I think we've done 70 posters, 40 presentations over those, those six or eight years. It was just insane. The foundation and using it to perpetuate and move things forward, that is something that I can get behind. And I don't want to be a part of a culture that's pressuring me to be something that I'm not. I don't think anybody does necessarily. Um, so if I'm the guy that's known as the backwards hat bro that makes some YouTube videos at this point in my career, like, fuck it, cool. I'm still pursuing science and I'm doing the same thing that many others are doing and that's not my problem. I'm now finding myself so engulfed in this chase, this pursuit that if I, if I wanted to, I won't, but if I wanted to just give up and quit, it would be letting so many people down. You, the audience, but I mean the systems would continue on, it'd be heartbreaking for myself for sure. But the thought of that, the, the progress that we've seen, the movement that's starting, this stuff all fuels the fire. Every morning when I wake up, I mean sometimes unsure like what day of the week it is, it's just a constant content grind schedule, oftentimes out of a backpack, resetting up everywhere day after day. I mean that's that's actually a it's actually a good segue, uh, because it's I don't it's it's clear just how much work you have to put into it. Like you have to work. I mean, the data shows that people are almost solely interested in just the pretty parts on social media. One of my favorite YouTubers is Casey Neistat. I've referenced him on this channel and he has two things that he references. He says you need to work hard and you need to be brave. And this idea of nothing comes easy, nothing at all comes easy, 
You can see it in my life. My, my parents, my family have seen the sacrifices that I've made. The moments that I missed over the last 10 years, um, some of them aren't okay. But that said, they now are seeing the, the benefits and returns of this lifestyle and this ambition and just this go get it attitude of I want this and I will pursue it. And it's really exciting now and liberating for all of us. But I think this point of work hard is don't forget your science. Like you can conceptualize, understand, and take data on anything in your life. Literally anything. Now this concept that Casey references of being brave, um, I think it's really knowing yourself. That's your skill sets, your values, your goals, making sure that you are constantly looking at those sort of things. I mean, this is kind of crazy, but every morning in the shower, I think about these things for 10 solid minutes. What did I do yesterday? What am I doing today in relation to my values, my goals, and am I making progress? What do I need to change? And then every Sunday I sit down and I make those changes. And I've done this for the better part of the last like six years straight now. And you're going to have to figure out what gets you that next step. Maybe it's that tutorial, maybe it's that conference, that workshop, maybe it's that mentor. Maybe it's like you actually fuck up. Those are all things that are realistically going to happen. And you know what? It's all right. Like life will go on and you will move forward and your true network will stay around you and support you. Our field has this advantage over everyone else that if you put in the work, if you actually put in the work to understand how it is that, that behavior works, why we do what we do, how to measure it, how to, how to collaborate, work with others, and actually have those difficult conversations, you will not only be the most informed person in the room oftentimes when, in, in this respect, but you're also gonna be able to influence and work with others and achieve the things that you wanna achieve. Like, how cool is that? Like, how amazing is this field? I wake up in the morning and remind myself that I am extremely lucky. I haven't had to deal with mental health, any sort of serious loss in my life. I'm healthy. My parents luckily sacrificed and worked their ass off to help me out and help position me in a way to where I can try to take this opportunity to try to make a big impact in the world. I mean, what behavior analyst has the opportunity to be able to travel to different countries, collaborate, create content with biggest, some of the biggest names in our field, some of the biggest names in science sometimes, create conferences with passionate colleagues. We could all be a part of this. I think it just starts with understanding your own behavior and what you want. Finding people with those other shared values and constantly reevaluating yourself and just whether or not you're getting closer to your goals and making the impact that you actually want to leave when you're when you're no longer here. I love my life. I love all the opportunities afforded to me because of my family, my colleagues, the hard work that I've put in, and to everyone that's supported me. So thank you. I hope I don't disappoint, but I'm gonna also stay true to myself. I hope that's what you were looking for. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Great, man. Thanks. All right. Yeah, let's wrap this up. Thanks, everyone. Now, on my most recent trip to Ireland with my family, I met up with Dave O'Rean. He's the one that replied out of a bunch of social media posts saying, hey, looking to connect. And today, we're going to talk about just what it's like with services in the UK. Now, he's from Ireland.